Hi. Um, so I'm just going to be talking kind of about mobile deployment with Cafe 2, um, give kind of a high-level overview of the stuff we've done to get it working quick on mobile phones. And then I'm just going to go into kind of how you might do it yourself and give you an overview of AI Camera, which is open source and on GitHub if you want to check it out later. Um, so first and foremost, uh, one of the things we did to get mobile quick with uh, inference time neural networks was optimize ARM CPUs. Um, we heavily leverage uh, Neon kernels, which are effectively math kernels written using Neon intrinsics to get, you know, basic uh, SIMD operations going quite quick. Uh, we do this kind of manually for convolution transpose, which you might see um, in the uh, open source repository. And then we also heavily use a library called NNPack, which uh, Yang Ching mentioned earlier, and Marat's actually here today with us. Um, this library is extremely fast. It uses state-of-the-art algorithms to get convolutions going extremely quick um, on these ARM CPUs. So quick that uh, on older phones, you know, 2014 uh, models, which may even have GPUs, the uh, ARM CPU is actually, you know, outperforming. So we use this very heavily. And this is also going to work on pretty much any ARM CPU, uh, which is, or at least later ARM CPUs, which is pretty nice. So you don't need to limit yourself to just mobile phones. Um, if you have embedded resources using ARM, you can use Cafe 2. And you can, you know, pretty much guarantee that you're going to have pretty fast inference. Um, all in all, we have under one megabyte of total binary size when you compile Cafe 2 and uh, use a couple tricks to make sure that you're not getting any debugging symbols and stuff, which is uh, pretty easy to deploy. So if you want to package this in an app, kind of send it out, um, it won't be a heavy burden to get, you know, full-fledged neural networks. I'd imagine a bulk of the size will be the trained model itself. But uh, as was mentioned earlier, there are a fair number of techniques to compress this down. Um, which we actually found was pretty, pretty important in um, the Facebook app. Um, so we saw the slide earlier. Uh, Yang Ching talked about uh, iPhone GPUs. So we use MPS CNN to uh, kind of leverage the heavily optimized uh, kernels that Apple provides um, on their platforms. Uh, MPS CNN and uh, also just straight metal provide kind of GPU interface on, I don't know if you're familiar with iOS programming, but on almost all, uh, all the modern iPhones. Uh, the metal kernels that we use are for our own operators, but MPS CNN has a fair number of things like convolutions, fully connected layers, or just kind of matrix multiplications um, that we can use kind of automatically. Um, auto leverage is there just because what we do is kind of detect what your device is and then rewrite the graph a bit. Uh, this isn't fully supported in open source as of yet. Uh, but you, it is all there, all the code is there. Um, as was mentioned earlier, we have an internal build system that does a fair amount of work for us and a lot of heavy lifting that uh, we're you know, trying to maintain CMake to be just as compatible with. Um, but we do have the function to auto rewrite the graph, use MPS CNN, and then you get extremely fast um, kind of inference time on uh, iPhone GPUs. The power savings are also pretty good. Obviously, if you are simply just not inferring every single time, you can save by just you know not using the GPU. But even when you are using the GPU, the kind of flops per watt, which is oftentimes a better metric, even though you're getting substantially more flops, um, is substantially better on this on uh, the iPhone GPUs. And uh, all the code is there, as I mentioned. So if you check out the repository, you can see under contrib there is a iOS FB or maybe it's Metal FB that has all of these things. Um, on Android GPUs, still kind of, oops, we're still kind of uh, working on uh, you know OpenGL, OpenCL support. None of that's open source or even you know fully finished yet. But we did uh, use Qualcomm's uh, Snappy library, which is their Snapdragon neural processing engine. Uh, this library, we worked with Qualcomm pretty well to make sure that everything was supported. Uh, uses the Cafe 2 graph, and then you can convert it into a format that then runs on Android GPUs and even DSPs if they're supported. The library is not out yet. However, all the scaffolding is there. You can see snappy support in the open source. So if when the library does come out, it's pretty easy to just drop that SO in and then load it onto your Qualcomm devices. Uh, it targets Snapdragon SOCs, so this isn't working for all Android devices, but uh, most, you know, uh, a lot of like Samsung American phones are using Qualcomm chips. And then similarly, these are all SOCs, not just phones, so you can use it outside of kind of the Android platform as long as you have a Snapdragon, um, you know, chip. Um, so we can see here kind of the speed up that you're getting. This is using a proprietary model that's running at 12 FPS. So if you're using maybe your own model, you might not see the exact same speed at 12 FPS. But then when we plug in Snappy, um, the relative gain here is what you should be looking at, which is that we're getting nearly 50 frames per second um, just inferring 
what is in the image. And I'm going to go over kind of later an open source version of this using uh, the squeeze net model, which has some of the uh, kind of techniques used to uh, reduce size from AlexNet into something that might run on a phone. Um, one thing that is particularly important to note here is the uh, kind of the GPU being used versus the CPU being used. Um, that's kind of what's happening. That's what the trade-off is right here. So the library is you running on the GPU. Um, it's not just very fast tuned CPU because as I mentioned, NNPack is actually extremely fast. So we are really milking the CPU for what it's worth. But once you get it over GPU on much more modern chips, you can see substantial speed ups. All right, and so this is kind of what we're targeting. We're trying to optimize the kind of 2015 plus class phones, which are all the modern phones that will have chipsets that really are kind of tailored, maybe not tailored for machine learning, but more suitable for it. But we do have support for 2013 and 2014 models. Um, the Android market is particularly fragmented, but we do, you know, have, as Facebook has a whole bunch of users, so we try to support kind of the older phones, so it should still be plausible to be running Cafe 2 on, on pretty old phones. I mean, this is 2013, um, and so that's, that's pretty nice. Um, so now what I'm going to do, and uh, actually just to mention, we have the GitHub site, uh, Cafe 2, Cafe 2, but you can also check out Cafe2.ai. We've got a bunch of great documentation and tutorials where a lot of the stuff I'm going to be showing you in the next section is actually documented if you want to follow along there. Okay, cool. So first and foremost, I'm just going to show you about the mobile exporter. Um, Cafe 2 is predominantly trained in Python. Not many people train in C++, but when you're training in Python, you often want to export your models into some format that is either transportable or usable you know, on a different you know, device, or in this case, phones. And what we've decided to do is really harp on the mobile export, which is going to produce an initnet and predictnet. Um, this is all the inputs that are really necessary, which is the current workspace, which includes kind of the state of the blobs and the trained weights that you have. The network structure itself, uh, this is the inference structure of the network, not the full training. You probably don't want to run the full training network on your phone, but I mean, if you did, you could. Um, and what the last bit is just kind of the parameters that are relevant. Um, and so if you use Brew, which is a nice little API in Cafe 2 for constructing models, this is a LANET model. Um, it's pretty straightforward to just do model.net and model.params as the arguments here. You're going to get out an initnet, an initnet and predictnet. And just to give you an overview of what those are, initnets kind of set up and initialize the weights for inference. Um, it'll populate kind of all the tensors relevant. And then predictnet is the structure that is going to be called repeatedly when you do something like infer on the current image of the camera. Um, so let's say you have this exported. You can go over to AI camera. This is an open source example. Um, that just, you know, just kind of runs a network using the camera as an input. Kind of wraps some of the more annoying stuff to get working in Android. Um, if you clone that down, you'll see the code is not particularly complex. The only complexity here is the fact that the network was trained on ImageNet, and so you'll see kind of random things like mean and stuff. Um, this is pretty common things, but it is data set dependent. Um, and I convert it kind of in C++ to a format that Cafe2 likes, which is not YUV, unfortunately, but rather RGB. So once you have that, it's actually very straightforward to infer. You effectively just need to use a predictor, which takes in the init and predict net. Um, I'll actually show you up here. This is probably not particularly visible. I don't know if I can. I'll just manually zoom in. Um, so the predictor is instantiated here with an init and predict net. These are just proto buffs, um, nothing, nothing complex going there. Uh, and then you scroll down to see what's actually being done. You just need to call run with an input vector and output vector. And that's really the totality of the C++ API you'd be using on mobile. So you get extremely fast inference using about like two effective lines of code. Everything else is just coercing the data to be something you can use. This is very simple stuff. Um, and let's, let's just kind of compile it and get it running, see what it looks like. See if I can get the... Uh, Visor apps. Let's just compile it. All righty. All righty. Let's see if Visor can connect. 
kind of show us what's going on. Oh, add in five seconds. No. All right, so you can see it's it's getting a kind of notebook, computer, space bar. These are all you know pretty pertinent classifications. It's running about five, six frames per second. This is all on CPU. We're not using the GPU. Um, and then let's just kind of validate that we're not only classifying computers using something like a cat. Oops, now you can't see the actual. Uh oh, uh oh. All right, sorry about this. Move this over. Minimize this. And hopefully you can see that it sees it's an Egyptian cat, very particular type of cat. Let's see. Oh, I guess it really likes Egyptian cats. Could be a lynx, though. Um, but yeah, so as you can see, this is uh, pretty, pretty straightforward to use and then also pretty performant um, once you get it running. That's a very simple app. I don't know if you guys have seen kind of the uh, Silicon Valley not hot dog app that was quickly whipped up by some people at Facebook to to show it. Um, yeah, and so this stuff is really, really simple to use, really straightforward. Once you get it trained, not hard to deploy. Um, so that's pretty much all I have here. I'm going to open up the floor for questions. If anyone has any? Yeah, Aaron's actually running towards you right now. <laughs> I have a loud voice. That works too. Okay, so you mentioned inference. Um, first question is about that. So any uh, attempted training on the phone or just, just inference and accelerated inference for the GPU? Um, yeah, so I mean, we haven't done, I mean, I don't know of any teams that have done any exploration on training on the phone. If you need a hand warmer in a, on a cold <laughs> day, I suggest you try training on a phone. All right, yeah. <laughs> um, so second question, since that's off the table. Um, you talked about using Metal uh, on iOS. You also talked about um, using Neon optimizations and some other things. As a guy who worked on system level with Android, um, how much access do you have to the GPU? Um, is there any modification to the phone whatsoever? Um, on Android? So, yeah, so that's actually a great question. The Android kind of ecosystem is super fragmented, not only just with the platforms kind of supported like hardware, but also the drivers on these phones. So even if you have an OpenCL compatible GPU, Google probably won't ship an OpenCL library. So what we've been doing is kind of experimenting with kind of a breadth of different types of libraries, OpenGL with their compute shaders, OpenCL, various things. We haven't actually looked at Vulkan yet, but we've found that it's, it's, it's a lot to deal with at this point and there isn't much unification. The current kind of forefront of our, our tech is in OpenGL compute shaders, which is the most compatible kind of across the Android platforms. And that exposes, I mean, whatever the OpenGL ES 3.1, I believe, um, API exposes. So, And that's just typical GPU access. Hint, look at Vulkan. Uh, yeah, so. End of hint. Well, Vulkan, I guess, is merging with OpenCL soon enough. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, which would be, I mean, great if there was one unified API. Fingers crossed. All right, so that's about it. I guess I'll hand it over to Aaron if you have any closing words. All right, great. Can I help you with that? Yes, please. All right, thanks a lot.